All right, let's start this race. I'm gonna hit play up the second hill here, and there's a big jump up ahead. It is a really good weekend, you guys. We got a brand new version of Unity. We got a brand new Google VR. We're doing a giveaway. We got community feature videos. So here we go. The first thing I want to I want to jump into is the Google VR SDK. Uh, I've downloaded Unity 551, which was released about a week ago, because I want to use that with with the brand new Google VR SDK version 1.20 that was released two days ago. And it's been two, it's been about two months since the last release 1.10, which had a bunch of various problems. So it's really cool to see a new version here that actually works. So let me get a new unity project going. I'm just going to Google VR 120 with unity 551. Now I've already downloaded the Google VR SDK, so I'm going to import that Unity package. It's in this folder. So, in when you when you download the the master zip file, you get the Google VR. This is the complete SDK, which should be a match of what's in this Unity package. And then you also got the samples. So there's some some cool samples in here. I'm going to import the Google VR, the Unity package. That does not contain the samples, but we'll probably take a peek at those anyways. Now, one thing I can do is not include iOS or 32-bit plugins since I'm not using those. And because we're on Unity 551, we're going to have to update the scripts. And you can see that there's no errors in the console. Everything works great. Now, this version of Unity does not have the cardboard native, which I personally prefer. Uh, so we'll have to, if you switch to Android, we should get a pop-up. There it is. Additional libraries must be imported for Google VR to be compatible with your version of Unity, which does not have Google VR native integration. And that means that we will not see. Oh, here it is. We got to you have to click once to get that window and then you're going to import all of these Android plugins to overwrite the ones that are included by default. And while we're here, I will hit player settings and set it to landscape left and go into the other settings and you'll notice that when we build for Google VR there is no uh, cardboard or daydream in this list and that's the way it should be we should only select this checkbox if we're making a build for gear VR and in order to build I'll have to modify this And we've talked about this in previous videos. Uh, my day one video for Intro to VR talks about which version to use. And really, there's no reason to use anything lower than API level 19. We also don't need to build for fat. We can just build for ARM processor. And we don't need that Android TV compatibilities. So just to get some basic... Uh, settings there in the build settings so we can build let's jump into uh, the google vr sdk we've got the empty scene now there's a lot of changes in here and i'm going to go through those in a minute but first let's just get a basic scene set up and for the, what you would do is go to the prefabs and bring the google vr viewer main prefab into your scene now this is going to vr enabled is going to turn on uh turn your main camera into a Google VR split screen camera. You can rotate it with holding alt and you can tilt while you're holding control. So everything's working there and it's good to have a ground. So I'll just add a plane real quick. Make sure it's at zero, zero, zero. The main camera needs to be a child. It, it cannot be a root game object. So I'm going to go to 3D, uh, create empty actually. So I have an empty game object. Make sure it's at zero, zero, zero. And I used to call this VR main. I think I'm going to start calling it player because it really lines up with the tag player right here because that is the player. And in a VR game, the, the player 
his view is the main camera and the main camera should have the tag of main camera now that we have the basic settings set up there there is one other problem though because the player is here at zero 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 and the camera's way over here that means the child position is incorrect it needs to be at zero 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 and it needs to have a rotation of zero 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 so if you need to move or rotate well you should never really rotate the player they should do that themselves but if you need to move the player you don't move the camera you move the player object so I'm gonna put him up at a Y of two so that he's uh, two meters tall and now I should be able to look ar if I hold alt I can look around all right now if I build and run to the phone I'll have to add the open scene and that means I'm gonna have to save my scene so I'll just call it scene test let's build and run to see if it works on the phone because with Google VR 110 there was there was issues with that and everything is working great right there so that is good news let's add some uh, some more stuff to our camera I'm gonna go to um, the utilities folder and add the GVR FPS canvas to the main camera so that it's a child of the main camera that's not going to be visible by default so I could hit play and and move it into a position where I can see it and I'll just put it down into the lower left hand corner that looks good and I can see I'm getting 60 frames per second and I'll also want to watch this in the device make sure we always running at 60 frames a second now if I stop playing I'm gonna lose my value here so let me just go ahead and uh, copy component on the rect transform and then I'm gonna paste the component here so that value paste component values and we should have the frames per second monitor in place the next thing we're gonna do is interaction so I'm gonna add a cube into the scene and we have a nice cube with an orange outline let's hit play but there's no way to interact with that we need to go back to the prefabs folder into the UI now there's new names for a lot all of these components that, that we're working with there's GVR dot pointer I won't say that word I'm not saying it. it's GVR dot pointer and that needs to be a child of the main camera so I'm gonna put the GVR dot pointer prefab onto a child of the main camera just like the frames per second canvas and now we should have that dot when we look around the screen and the next thing I'm gonna do is just add a couple materials here super quick because the dot is white and the box is white and the ground is white so I just made a brown and let's select the color on this now I could drag that onto the box. I'm gonna press Control D on brown, call it green. There we go. Now we got a little bit of color, so we can see what's going on. We have the dot, but we can't interact with the box until we add a few things. First of all, the main camera needs a ray caster. We're we're shooting a ray straight out from the camera at all times to know what the what the ray is hitting that way. We know what we're interacting with. So we need to add a raycaster. And if I type in raycaster, I can see what types there are. Previous to uh, version 110 and 120, you would use a physics raycaster. Um, but now we need to use a GVR pointer physics raycaster. And there's also a GVR pointer graphic raycaster. And this may be useful however I'm able to interact with UI without it so um, I'm not sh at this point I'm not convinced it's necessary so if we add the pointer physics raycaster to the main camera and we also have the dot pointer but we need an event system uh, previously we would add an event system uh, this way and then add the gaze input module to it but there's a new way to do things. I'm gonna delete that. We 
if you go to the UI prefabs UI folder, there's the GVR event system. Because in addition to the GVR pointer input module, you also have to have the GVR pointer manager uh, script on the event system. So now that we've got the event system with these two scripts on it, and we have our pointer, uh, we've got the canvas, or we got the main camera with the physics raycaster, we're ready to interact. But currently we can't interact with the box because in order to interact with an object, you have to have an event trigger on it. So now that there's an event trigger, even without any events, that's fine. We can still, uh, now we can interact with that box. And if we wanted to make it do an action, then we just have to just say, add a new event. I'm going to say pointer down. That's for a click. And I'll just say for the cube, we'll set the game object to uh, is active to that's true and this one's false so if I click on the box it should disappear because the game object is set to inactive now of course right here is where you could also add your custom scripts and call your custom functions so we have interaction working in Google VR 120 the next thing I want to look at is the this, this prefab is for the controller pointer, so that's for Daydream. I don't have the Daydream platform, so I can't get into that. We also got the, uh, there's some prefabs here for the audio. And we've already got the FPS canvas. Let's look at some of the demos. There's a demo in here for, save my scene. There's a GVR demo, which is similar to the demo that we just made, but they have a nice 3D model here with the, looks like Tetris or something in this room. And there's a box that you can interact with. So there's another example of interaction and taking and performing an action on a cube when you click on it. There's also a permissions demo. And the permissions demo uh, just looks like it's for um, requesting permissions on the an Android platform. If you go to the main menu and you open up the uh, permissions flow manager script, you can see that it's uh, requesting permissions for example the game needs to access external storage please grant permission when prompted and so it's granting Android permissions the other uh, scenes here's the scrolling UI demo and this one doesn't have the the dot on the screen it looks like it may be set up for the daydream controller so I'm gonna go to the again to the uh, UI prefab and add to the player on the main camera there's a controller pointer I'm gonna turn that off and I'm gonna bring on the uh, GVR dot pointer so it's a child of the main camera and I believe there's an event system already so we should be ready to go and this is all that it does as far as I could see without digging into it too far but it is a nice little canvas here with some tabs and there's a button click sound and a hover sound and you can see when you hover over an item it changes the color and when you click on it it kind of selects that tab so nice little uh, UI demo there so moving on from there in the demos folder is there's just uh, all the sounds and 3d models are there so if i were to go back into my scene i could use some of that stuff i could go to the demos folder and the environment get that cube room in here if i wanted to instead of the the grass but and they got some good little sounds for the ui but this pretty much wraps up the google vr sdk everything's working if i build and run this works great on the phone and uh, it seems like a good solid release here. So the next thing I want to do is bring go go into the Google VR SDK Master 120 folder, and there is the samples. In the samples scene, there is uh, the Daydream Labs controller playground. So there's the assets. So I could just open up this folder right here as a Unity project, but what I'm going to do is this has the Google VR SDK, and it's not. This isn't a. This is not Google VR 
one dot twenty. Um, and and I want to use the Daydream Controller Lab Playground with one dot twenty. So I already have the Google VR and the scripts folder. So I'm going to bring in the sample scripts and shaders, and drag those into my assets folder here. Now, because this is not Google VR 1.20, we're going to have a lot of errors. And I, I, if you're developing for Daydream, I apologize. I don't have Daydream, so I don't, um, I can't help figure out how to make it work for that. But what I, what I want to do is make it work for Google VR. That way, uh, we can make it work for cardboard and let's go to the console and look at all the errors we got this is gonna take a little bit of time there's there's position swapper and toggle action in the script slash events so let's get script slash events position swapper toggle action and these have to do with um, the controller so I'm gonna delete those and then we get the G let's see scripts input app button input and input events app button input input events delete we got G uh, controller input module in the scripts GUI and controller warning delete those and we got click input in the scripts input let's get rid of that one controller orientation that's another controller one that I know we could just delete since we're not we don't have a controller and we got directional slash input elbow orientation flick input I believe almost this whole folder can get deleted gyro input mast orientation input and I've opened up all these scripts and I've already seen what they do and they're just doing functions that have to do with controllers so although it's pretty although it's gonna break uh, the scenes because we're not gonna be able to use the scenes how they were meant to be at least we'll be able to get in them and play them so we got the uh, input orientation and the raw accelerometer input so raw accelerometer input delete we've got just a couple scripts left in this folder the, the orientation input and touch input now touch input that is for the touchpad I believe on the GVR controller or on the daydream controller circular navigation input this is a script from the um, adventure and it's it's doing some circular movement on the camera based on w how you're touching on the uh, daydream controller and we're getting close to the end we got the archaeology artifact and actually what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take that back I'm gonna go to my recycle bin and I'm gonna bring back the circular navigation there it is and when I get to the we're, we're out of the uh, scripts input folder basically and we're getting to the errors that are in the samples, like the samples games themselves. So 
on the scripts that are dealing with the, the games, just in case I want to look at how they're moving the camera and figure out a solution to do that without the controller, I'm going to comment out the parts that that are dealing with the Google VR controller. So here we could just uh, I'm just going to comment out the stuff that is dealing with the controller. So now the camera, at least the script's working, and it's just, there's no input, and it's never ready. Uh, but, but at least we could go look at that script to see how the game is trying to work and modify it to work with uh, what we have. Now the artifact, here we go. This uh, doesn't have a GVR controller orientation. So because we don't have the GVR controller, I'm just going to comment out this. Uh, line and back here let's let's see what else we got now we're we got the remote controller no we got another uh, GBR controller orientation call and there's another one right here okay fix those two we got the GBR controller and the fishing we're getting to the fishing game now and uh, we, we don't got a is input up no it's not we don't have a controller we got the same problem it looks like for the next three functions so I'm going to comment out the parts that are you looking for the Google daydream controller input and we got the pancakes so in the pancakes it's uh, updating uh, rigid bodies rotation we got uh, if the Google VR click button down we could change this. The reason why I'm calming these out because we might want to change this to input dot get button fire one or something so that we could st still try to play some of these games. Now we're getting, I promise we're almost getting to the end of these. We got the sky ship controller and that's setting a rotation based on the Google VR rotation. We got the statue remote controller. No, no, we got the Google VR touch position it's it's getting right there so I'm gonna comment that out and if the Google VR click button up uh, so if it looks like that's when you let go of the button that goes all the way down to right here so I'm gonna comment out that whole section because we don't know if Oh, it looks like there's a couple more. Hold that up. Let's take this all the way down to, to right there. So press process touchpad. We can't we can't process the touchpad. And we're getting a getting close statue. Again, it's calling a Google controller orientation. And we got the tennis game. It's, there's a lot of calls to this GVR controller orientation. It's setting the tennis rotation to that. And we got the magic wand. We don't know if the Google VR controller is touching. So let's comment that line out. And same thing right here. Get it into one line so that I can get, so that it can comment out. Now here there's, we got a problem because we need to end that else statement. Okay. Clear out all the warnings. We only have four errors left. We got the stereo controller does not contain a direct render. All right. So we, we won't call that. And we have the no definition for GVR controller orientation.
and it it was a float so we'll just set that to zero two errors left this one we we're gonna mess up the bool so we'll just comment both of those out and that's the end of the errors now let's get into it let's go into the uh, samples there's the launcher but unfortunately the launcher um, we can't launch we can't launch the games now you'll notice it doesn't have a a uh, split screen and that's because they have this VR platform manager with the disable stereo and editor so I think if you turn this off it will there it is you'll get that so this is, looks like a handy little script disable the stereo in the editor that should just be an option on Google VR viewer okay so there's not uh, not too much in this scene but some uh, some cool stuff in here some islands and windmill and uh, clouds let's take a look at uh, the next scene we got the adventure game so I'm gonna go into the adventure scenes and load up the white box now here I believe this is a third person controller game and I think this is your player right here and well I know it is if I select it we, we get that guy so he moves based on the uh, input I think with the Google VR controller so uh, you know I, I'm not gonna do it in this video but we could take this and modify it so that it works with mobile VR Um, but nevertheless, lots of cool 3D models in here, sounds, plants, trees, coins. On to the next one, we got archaeology. And in archaeology, again, this is a cool looking game that's meant to work with the Google, with the Daydream controller. So it looks like here you, you might use the uh, Daydream controller to uncover an, ar an artifact and we would have to figure out a way to do that with with just gaze input or with the with the click button on the cardboard um, so <laughs> maybe not oh yeah it works hey the game already works look at this 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 paper I I'm an archaeologist what have I I can't move yet I need to I, I need to go to the asset store and I need to get the mobile VR movement pack which is the one and only best mobile VR movement pack on the unity asset store then I can walk a little bit closer to the artifact and get get that oh there it is I got it now I can't rotate it you I think you use the daydream controller to rotate it here um, but hey we could just move it to the table and we'd be done really cool archaeology game example here and some good terrain and as always a nice little windmill out there moving on we got boomerang let's look at boomerang island and I'm not gonna save these boomerang island looks really cool I want to turn this into a game and what I might do is turn these into little mini games um, that people could try and release them on the asset store for free um, so that and, and make them work for mobile VR with, with the gaze input because obviously I could shoot at these targets with my boom boomerang there's my boomerang I could shoot at my targets I could figure out a way to do that with, with gaze input um, so that'd be a cool little free sample to throw on the unity asset store like unity's VR samples nice little free pack here of of uh, VR game samples the next one to look up a dragon flight and dragon flight is rad I want to be the dragon though I want to be the dragon flying but I think you control the dragon here with 
uh, with your controller. So it says to tilt to control. Well, I tilting my head doesn't control it, but maybe we could make it do that. So again, super, super nice scene. Uh, cool dragon model. There he is. So this is Dragonflight. Now let's go to the next one. This is going to be the Dragon Team. I'm not sure which. I'm not sure what this one does because. Um, I, I I'm not sure what this one does, but it looks it looks cool, and it looks like it looks like it might be multiplayer. I don't know. Dimming sphere. I wonder what that's for. Oh, when you bring up the UI, nice. That's cool. So if you bring up the UI, that's that's a good idea. Dim dim the world. But again, lots of really cool 3D models in here. And some kind some kind of a game going on. I just I'm not sure, not sure what to do with that one. Fishing, this could definitely be made for uh, gaze input or input with the, you know, click with the button here. Um, and I noticed the water, it's pretty cool. I, I don't know exactly what's going on, but just by looking at it, it looks like it's vertex colored shader that's just... Um, Lurping between the between colors to make the water animated. Now that would be a really fast way to make water in mobile VR. Looking at the at the water, it does have a sine wave normals GVR sine wave normals light mapped. So that's something to look into that might work for some some good water. And again, we could turn this into a fishing game for mobile VR. There's a maze, and this one is looking down at a maze. You're not in a maze, but we could control this with the with the gaze cursor. Work our way out of the maze. There's ninja training. Now this sounds good. Uh, there's nothing wrong with ninja games, and I don't know what to do, but you can. Click to begin training. Well, clicking doesn't work, but I'm sure we can make this scene work with mobile VR. If we dig into it a little bit more, there's a pancakes scene. So this one is flipping the pancakes. And I remember turning off the, the, abil the, the ability to move the rigid body. So we would have to figure out a new way to move the rigid body because the Daydream controller used to move it. And there's pottery. Now this one looks cool. The thing spins, and we would sculpt some sculpt some pottery in here. There's sky ship. And this one looks a little messed up. I'm not sure. This thing starts. It's, it's it's getting crashed over there. So it looks like the camera is supposed to be out at this object wherever wherever that little flyer thing was at. I can't see it. Oh, it's over there. There it is. So it looks like the camera is supposed to follow this. And, and you're supposed to fly this through these rings. There's a statue demo. And, oh, I think maybe you build, rebuild the statue. Broken, and you got to put it back together. We got tennis. 
and Dennis we, we need a way to move to move our tennis racket same thing with the wand it's uh, looks like a cool little game but we need a way we need a way to move that wand there it is right here You could probably shoot these targets or something. And last but not least, we got the xylophone scene. Xylophone Island. Make some music in here. So lots of cool demos to look at, but out of the box, they're, none of them are really going to work with, with just Gay's input. But a lot of them look like they could... You know, easily be modified like fishing or the dragon flight or the boomerang. Archaeology already worked. We've got that one going. So, and uh, either way, lots of cool demos and maybe some stuff that is helpful like shaders for the water like we've seen in the fishing. All right. So, this is all working for Google VR for on the phone so i i feel confident that uh that this is a good version to develop on using 120 with unity 551 so for 5,000 subscribers i announced a giveaway to give away one copy of each one of my assets to someone so someone's gonna win all seven of my assets on the asset store and to do that, you just had to put a uh, screenshot in the comments here of a project that you're working on. So 18 people have entered into the giveaway. And this is where we're going to do it at. It's going to be a race. So you'll see your name down here if you entered into the giveaway. And what's going to happen is we're going to race down this track and the first person to get to the end is going to win the pack now the track looks like this and the first person to touch the end here is going to win how this works is each racer has this script on them called racer so if i look here uh there's a there's a racer script and the racer script has a rigid body and a mesh render. And when it starts, it sets a random color to the mesh to, to the mesh render. So you'll get a random color on your guy. And so everyone's not white. And then in the fixed update, which we use for physics movements, we add a force to the rigid body. Zero in the X, zero in the Y. But for the Z, we give a random dot range of five to ten. So just to let you guys know, this is def this is completely random. Uh, your speed here is is determined by Unity's random uh, API. So the winner is going to be picked by this value right here, the random dot rage speed that is added to your rigid body when the game starts. And I've also added a a text object here to follow the the ball so that we could see the racers as you're racing and so here we just did a transform dot position that updates the the text object so it follows the ball's position and then at the very end of the race there's a finish script on this object and that just counts for the first person that touches it and then it's going to say that person has won the race so let's announce a winner for the giveaway and see who is going to win this race. All right, let's start this race. I'm going to hit play and then pause it so that we can get a chance to look at our color. So notice your name and then mark which color your guy is so that you can follow it throughout the race. All right, here we go. Still here. It's a pretty even race. Everyone's tied up. Jump. 
like we have a new leader of the pack and who is going to win the race it is alex winger won by a huge majority there at the end we had a second third and a fourth place down here and all of the racers have made it oh no there's one more one more all right, you guys, really fun race. That was awesome. Good job, all you guys. You did excellent in the race. Everyone did awesome. All right, <laughs> this has been a lot of fun. Alex, you have won the race. That means you get one copy of each of my assets on the asset store. So I hope that helps build a VR game and get it out on Google Play so I can go then make a community feature video of it. And speaking of that, there is more community feature videos coming up this weekend on the channel. Thanks for watching, you guys. Thanks for entering the giveaway. I will see you in the next video.